What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Tim Sports Talk. And today we're talking about the Washington football team versus the Los Angeles Chargers recap. And I've calmed down after the game. I decided to take a little breather during my live stream. I was obviously really heated. And who knows? I might get like that again because it was a frustrating game to watch. But before we get into the negatives, let's go ahead and take a th think about the positives here for a minute. Uh, Dustin Hopkins did start the game off with three field goals. That was cool, three in a row. Uh, Terry McLaurin, he needs to get the ball more, but man, what a catch he on the sideline. That was incredible. Then setting up Logan Thomas for the beautiful high point touchdown on the left side of the end zone. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful play there. Uh, Antonio Gibson ran well, obviously had the fumble, but... He had, I believe, like 20 carries for 90 yards, so well over four yards a carry. Uh, gotta love Antonio Gibson. He played really, really well tonight. Um, and I like that we ran the ball a lot. You know, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick went down early. Uh, Taylor Heineke came in. He played okay. And we ran the ball to protect these quarterbacks, slow the game down, try to give us as many opportunities to – or really not give the Chargers as many opportunities as possible. And – I thought that was a really good game plan. Now, were there some plays that maybe you went back shore here or there? But overall, I thought the game plan was pretty solid on offense. The penalties, 8 for 57. You'd like to see that be better. I'm trying to think if there's any other positives here. Uh, I'm just going to go with that. I think I'm going to go with that. All right. And now let's get into the negatives. Let's get into the negatives. The offense struggled. The offense struggled. Uh, I think it's abhorrent that Terry McLaurin did not get a target at all in the first half. I, I just think that is absolutely ridiculous. To like, Give him a screen pass. Get him the ball somehow. I mean, come on. In the, you got to give your best player plays to get the ball, right? Give him a screen, a, a screen pass or a jet sweep. Do something to get the ball in his hands. He can make people miss. He grew up as a running back. He has the ability to run the football. Uh, we've seen it a lot, like uh, the touchdown play against the Giants last year where he made three guys not tackle him, right? He caught it in between three dudes. Nobody tackled him, and he ran for a touchdown. Come on. That part of the game plan has got to get fixed immediately. Terry McLaurin only getting four or four targets all game is outrageous. And I understand they were double teaming him a lot. I understand it's hard to get him the ball. But even the Packers made sure it once Jalen Ramsey was there on the Rams last year in the playoff game, they moved Devontae Adams all over the field. They were trying to find a way to get their best player the football. We got to figure that out, okay? We got to get Gibby the ball, Terry McLaurin the ball. The, those are our two best players. I mean, it starts with Terry. Terry's our number one. Gibby, number two. And then Logan had a decent day, too. When he ended up, I know he had the touchdown. Uh, three catches, 30 yards, and a touchdown. Nothing great. I mean, really, nothing offensively was great. That was a big problem with their whole offense. Of course, I talked about the three field goals just to be positive. But then he missed a 53-yarder, I believe. Come on, Dustin. It's a four-point game. And then we would have had a chance at a 58-yard field goal. Instead of punting it, we could have got a 58-yard field goal to try to take the lead. We need a kicker that can make those type of field goals, man. There are, kickers are out there that can make 58 yarders. Yeah, it's a long field goal, but it's not unheard heard of. It's not impossible. Dustin Hopkins has the leg. Why can't he make a 53 yard field goal? Again, he missed it wide left. So, so, so frustrating. So, there's offensively. Now we're getting into the worst part of this. Of this game. This so-called elite defense. This so-called best defensive line in football. Got absolutely worked in this game. Worked. Some people might be fooled by this 20-point number, right? No, let's go ahead and take a look at the play-by here. Play-by-play. It was a 12-play, 68-yard drive, 5 minutes and 25 seconds off the clock. The first drive of the Chargers in the second half. Of course, they finally fumbled the ball, which we got lucky. That wasn't a fumble. His arm was clearly coming forward. I don't know what New York was looking at. No clue what New York was looking at. No, no idea. His arm was clearly coming forward. Great, great play by Montez. Cool. 
you got there to make it so that they didn't complete a pass, but that wouldn't have fumbled. We got lucky there, and they just drove down the field on us there. The next drive, five plays, 39 yards. They got well into the red zone again. William Jackson made a nice play. It was a little overthrown, and William Jackson made an interception. But still, ball was being moved, 39 yards. If you got 39 yards of drive, that's pretty dang good. The next one, obviously, we fumbled the ball. We gave it right to the Chargers, and they ended up scoring that pretty quickly. And then the final drive of the game, six minutes and 43 seconds wiped off the clock. They could have scored on that drive. They ended up kneeling at the end because we had no timeouts and no way to stop them. We had a third and 16 on that drive. I believe we had a third and five on that drive. Third and three. A third and seven. And then a third and four that unbelievably, this third and 16 and third and four should get people fired. That's how bad it was. People need to be fired. First off, Justin Herbert, all the time in the world. Basically this whole game. But especially these two plays. On top of that, their best wide receiver, probably their best player, at least offensively. Joey Bosa, obviously, on defense. But arguably their best player, Keenan Allen. On this third and 16, left wide open for a first. Nobody was even there. If somebody was there to hit him, if he just caught the ball and we hit him, he would have been short, been a yard or two short. Instead, he catches it, turns around, nobody's there. He just dives forward because he's so wide open. Then the third and four. Nobody was within five yards of Keenan Allen in the middle of the field. What? Keenan Allen left open? With nobody with nobody within five yards. Easiest pitch and catch of the day. It was a six-yard play. Seven-yard play. It was nothing. They call it nine yards, but he just dove forward. He caught the ball with like five yards. It was so unbelievable wide open. Those are just two of the third downs. Take a look at this. Team stats, 14 of 19 on third down. What is this, Joe Barry and Jay Gruden's defense? Are we circa 2015 all of a sudden? 2016? When we can't get off the field on third down? And honestly, this could have been 16 for 19. They had two drop passes. We left them wide open. They just dropped the ball. I mean, unbelievable that the defense of this caliber gets no pressure on the quarterback. We had one sack on Justin Herbert. One sack. Chase Young, Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, Matt Ioannidis, Jonathan Allen, the whole crew was shut down today. Especially in the pass game. In the run game, I think we, uh, there was sometimes they played okay. What did they end up with? 29 carries for 90 yards. If you get rid of the a bunch of kneels, that's one carry, seven, so what? 26 carries for 95 yards or something. A little under four yards a carry. Eckler had 15 carries, 57 yards, a little under four yards a carry. Roundtree was eight carries, 27 yards, so about three and a half yards a carry. Defensively in the run game, and it was a lot of the defensive line. Deron Pades made some nice plays. I know Matt Ioannidis had the negative three-yard run. But that, that defensive line was absolutely abhorrent. Horrific. Unbelievably bad. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe how inept these four, count them, four first-round picks were today. I mean, the pocket was so clean for Justin Herbert all night. It was so clean. He could step up. I mean, there was one after a play action where he, like, kind of got scared, He and he started, and then he realized, wait a minute, my my clock was telling me there's got to be somebody here. There's nobody within three, four yards of me. And also, that guy that's that close to me has a guy in between. There was nobody. Justin Herbert had one of the easiest days of his NFL career. And it's supposed to be against an elite defense. One of the best defenses in the league. 
So many first-round picks. So much talent on that defense. And, oh, my God, speaking of talent, why is Cameron Curl one of the better defenders last year, especially at a rookie level? He was basically benched for Bobby McCain. I'm still waiting on the percentages of the snap count to come out. I bet it was under 25% that Cam Curl played. He was, like, never on the field. Tory McTire was on the field probably as much. I saw number 35 out there as much. I saw rookie Benjamin St. Juice, who we actually like on this channel, didn't play great today. I saw him on the field more than Cameron Curl. Bobby McCain should not be starting over Cameron Curl. Landon Collins shouldn't be starting over Cameron Curl, but definitely not Bobby McCain. I mean, Jamin Davis, our first-round pick, was non-existent. I, didn't, I don't remember anything. Uh, what do you end up with? Jamin Davis, two tackles as a linebacker. Two tackles. John Bostic had eight. Cole Holcomb had 11. I wonder what... Uh, he may not have played a lot. I honestly wasn't looking for number 52 that much. Uh, being a play-by-play -play guy, I wasn't necessarily eyeing everybody on there. But yeah, Cam Curl came right into the game in that first quarter, finally... And he got a pass deflection and a pass, another pass breakup. It was like back-to-back. -back. He's probably our best cover, or he is our best cover safety. He might be one of our best cover interior uh, secondary. Like in the slot, against the tight end, against the running back, against anybody. Right? And he's barely on the field. Just disgusting. William Jackson, he played decent today, but he got handsy, man. He's handsy. He could have easily got a couple more PIs that were not called, fortunately for us. Now, I know a lot of Skins fans are probably going to complain about the refs, and the refs were, refs were bad. I mean, that first face mask they missed on Antonio Gibson, disgraceful. I mean, he's literally all inside, and his head gets whipped around. Could have just tore Antonio Gibson's neck off. It was disgusting. Missed that call. Antonio Gibson's stiff arm. He just stiffed armed him right in the face mask. That's what everybody does. And they call face mask on Gibson? It's a stiff arm. Duh. I'm hitting him in the face. That's what they do. <sighs> uh, and our biggest weakness that I talked about with the Chargers fan, Ryan Dyrud, was going to be Sam Cosby versus Joey Bosa and Joey Bosa definitely was making some noise he did get unfortunately for him two roughing the passer penalties one of them he kind of went low I don't they didn't even show the replay on the other so I don't know exactly what that one looked like but he did get two roughing the passer penalties but the point is is he was beating Cosby pretty consistently he did end up with a sack on the day he was beating us Joey Bosa, Sam Cosby has a long way to go. Granted, Joey Bosa is one of the best in the business. I knew it was going to be a long day for Cosby. I thought Cosby was going to need a year anyway. Yeah, you're going to need a lot more than probably even a year to go against a guy like Joey Bosa. But yeah, Cam Sims didn't play a lot today. That was interesting. Cam Sims, uh, Deami Brown got the start. Obviously, he didn't do jack squat. One catch on four targets for negative two yards. Yikes. Jared, Jared Patterson ran hard today, man. Two carries, nine yards, but he also had another carry that went for seven that was called back for a holding on Brandon Sheriff. Brandon Sheriff had a holding and a false start on the drive we missed a field goal. It's arguably that he, he caused the missed field goal. He had 15 yards of penalties. If he doesn't have 15 yards of penalties, we're, add 15 more yards, that's a 36-yarder. 38-yarder, whatever it would have been. Would have been right there. Tough, tough, tough day for our Washington football team. But we'll be back next week in just a few days going against the Giants, where the Giants are getting beat pretty bad right now by the Broncos. Last I saw it was 20-7 to in the fourth quarter. So that's good news is that they're not looking too hot. But we got a lot of work to do before three, four days from now. Four days. We got a lot of work to do. It's a little bit somber, obviously. We come off a loss. I know it's a lot of negativity, but, you know, that's what happens when you have a loss. And I'm passionate. It sucks. Uh, I want better for this team. I'm rooting for this team. I'll be here all season long. 
hoping this team does everything. I was here all last season. Um, my whole life I've been here. I've had, they haven't been good since I've been alive. Born in 93. Last time we won was in 92. And I'll continue to be here, but got to get better than this. I mean, you can't have Jack Del Rio's defense look like Joe Barry's and have me be happy. It's just not – I'm not going to be happy. It's one thing if we lost this game – because the offense sucked, which the offense didn't play great. But we didn't lose this game because of the offense. Yeah, it hurt. Antonio Gibson fumbled the ball. Absolutely. But that defense got worked today. Worked. I mean, we saw the drives in the second half. I mean, it was – minimum was like 39 yards. The minimum drive was 39 yards? That's insane. And you want to talk to me, oh, the offense played bad. No. The, its offense was not why we lost this football game. It was all defense. All defense. I don't even care if they had those two turnovers. One of them shouldn't have gotten a turnover. All defense this game, and it sucks because this defense is supposed to be elite. I said it; they were elite. I said they were great, and they still could be great. But today, they sucked. They were garbage, pathetic. Looked like me running around there. I could have played defense as well as these guys today. They were they were terrible, and I suck. <laughs> Oh, man. But, hey, you guys let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Also, in the description, there's a Discord link. Hop in our Discord and come talk some football. And last but not least, there are donation links in the description below. If you feel so good, kind, you could donate to the channel. And until next time, see you.